In this week's episode, we take a look at what to buy, the retro gamer, be it significant other, family member, friend, or yourself, this Christmas. My name is Anthony. And I'm Barry, and this is episode 75 of the Retro Gaming Dads podcast, the podcast for everything retro and retro inspired. Okay, so this week I've had no time to play anything at all. So my daughter's been sick, which is very sad, because oh. I've not made that much further on Sonic at all. In all fairness, the only thing I've been playing this week is Animal Crossing with Elliot. <laughs> We're trying to Isn't upgrade his uh, house usual. before Christmas so we can fit a Christmas tree in it because he's got so much junk in it. <laughs> oh yeah, you said that everything's like stacked to top of each oh, other. Oh yeah, every fish he's ever caught is in a fish tank in his house. It's it's mad. It's like a maze trying to get around it. So, wait, so it's a collective mania like we are when we play games. <laughs> yeah. At least I keep me mine in the inventory. It's just spilt out into the actual island. Kerry really <laughs> isn't happy about it because technically it's her island. He's oh, just the yeah. second resident on it. And he's just dumping everything everywhere, digging holes everywhere, never fills them back in. Half the trees are chopped down. Look, it, Honestly, it looks like a disaster zone on that island at the moment. And Kerry wonders why I won't let him come to my island. I was about to say, I was just about to say, I bet you're glad he's not on your island. Oh, yeah. Although he did get my switch and start playing with me, and I came back and my infantry was full of watering cans. Why is he playing your game? Remember. Because I had my switch out, but I left it. He was playing on his, and I came back and he picked mine up and was playing on my one. <laughs> you want to ruin your island next. Yeah, except when I said, no, you can't play that anymore. But I just wanted to be like, Daddy, I was like, oh, you little suck up. <laughs> you know how to get me. Yeah. So since we've not really been playing anything, we may as well jump into the episode. But before we do, as always, we'd like to thank our Patreon subscribers. Yes, thank you very much to Short Gizmo and Bobby Sox. Again, the support is greatly appreciated. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, this episode is going to be our festive buyers guide for everyone who's into, well, gaming in general, but maybe skewed a little bit more towards the retro gamer, would you say? Uh, yeah, I would say so. It's, it's a good mixture, at least within it. Uh, but yeah, like you said, definitely a bit more towards a retro gamer. Uh, but there is yeah. something for everyone within this, so please don't fret. Yes. And before we start, just a massive disclaimer, a lot of this will be listed in our show notes and some of those links may be affiliate links. Following them and purchasing items won't cost you any more, but will help the show. Should we start off with some games? Everyone loves games. Yes, everyone loves games. And there was a game that we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, which is a bit of a fantastic purchase, especially coming up towards Christmas, is the Atari 50th Anniversary Collection. Yes. Now this looks amazing. As I said in the last episode when we talked about this, I'm not an Atari fan. The Atari 5600 and all that lot, and especially 2600, is a little bit too primitive for me. I'm not saying that a lot. But it's not the generation I started with. However, I really want this. This is definitely on my list to Santa. If you're a good boy, he might bring it. But this does look amazing. I'm always a good boy. No, don't don't go there. Uh, this has definitely caught my eye. I've not really played Atari games, but I think not the fact that it's just got over 100 titles to play. It's all the bonus content of the video footage, which is archived and new footage together in it as well. Give you a lot of history about Atari is definitely a good thing way to draw retro people in. Yes, and this definitely seems to be the kind of title that sets the gold standard for what these compilations should be. Oh yeah. Just really quickly, did you by any chance play the Super Mario 3D All Stars compilation? Yes, yes I did. I, I've that was it. absolute bare bones. It went. Oh, this is a game. It came out this year, and this is a tiny paragraph about it, and that was it. Yes. Sonic Origins, mm, you could go and look at some artwork and you could rewatch videos from within the game and listen to music, some of which was labelled up wrong. Yeah. And that was, that was better. 
but none of that compares to this. This looks amazing. This seems really in depth. And as much for the games, I want it for that. Not only that, especially for the prizes as well. Getting all the games and the video content as well, you know, for that price, because obviously a lot of effort's gone into this collection. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is definitely a great game to start off this episode with. And this is definitely a must buy for any retro gamers out there. Yes, absolutely. And to be honest, I think I'm going to get this. If no, if no one gets it me for Christmas, um, I'm going to get it for myself. Now, the next title, it's been a little bit controversial after being released, but Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yeah, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Now, after this release, unfortunately, it's been hit with a few bugs, which I'm sure they're working on getting fixed. However, um, I've actually heard good reviews from some people I know, they said that going mm. out into it, it is absolutely fantastic. It's complete open world. So you can go from the very start, go to the final gym. They were like, you go to the final gym, you know you get wrecked. So pff, don't do it. But they said you can do whatever you want and whatever way you want. And it is just the next step. And they're hoping that this will be Pokemon going forwards. Um, now, like Barry said, it's controversial, hasn't had the best startup, but for any avid Pokemon fan, it's definitely one to get. I think I might be putting this on my list. I do fancy getting it. It is one that is attracting me. See, the really important question would be Scarlet or Violet? Scarlet. Scarlet. Is that because it's Just immense? The legendary color. looks cooler. I really don't like to look at these Pokemon, which are like half motorbikes, half whatever. No, not that I like the look of it. I just prefer to look at it over the violet one. I just don't like the designs of them. How many animals in nature do you see with a wheel on them? None. Then again, how many ice creams do you see with faces? <laughs> None. We, we can well, easily yeah. go into questioning a lot of these Pokemon choices, but let's not go in there. We're there all day. Yeah. Well, for games, I think that's it. There's absolutely definitely not another game that I always bang on about that came out no, this year. No. no, no, that's it. So for games, it's just those two for today. Yeah. But talking about Sonic, <laughs> you knew it was coming. You knew it was coming out of all the time. I had to get him in here somewhere. Sonic Frontiers, another game which the closer it got to release, actually the more positive people were about it, including me. Oh, 100%. But when it was first released, when it had the um, gameplay review, just look. Yeah, so that's before it was Shocking. released, when it was first like previewed. Yes. Oh, yeah. When when we first got the gameplay review, it didn't look the best. The graphics wasn't really great at the time. And then, like you said, closer and closer we got to time, the more we got to see of it, the more we heard about it, it looked better mm. and better. And then playing it, it's actually a fantastic game. There is bugbears we have, like the pop-ins that we explained, but it is a great game. Yes, it's technically flawed, but it's fun, both the cyberspace and the open world areas. Fighting the enemies in the open world as well, it's not just a case of lock on and bop them on the head. It's a lot of them, you need a specific skill and different sets of tactics to actually take them down. Yes. You might have to deflect something at them. You might need to use your Psy loop ability to stun them. Some of them, there's one enemy you need to be launched up into the air and drop down on it so hard that you smash it. Oh, yeah, the spring one. No, you haven't come against that enemy yet. <laughs> oh, okay. I, will I think wait it's, to see. if I remember right, I think it might be called the Strider. I might be wrong. I might be wrong with that. But there's loads of great enemies, and the bosses in it are absolutely amazing. And the music in it is absolutely amazing really gets you into the mood for the fights. You know, it, it fits in really well. Yeah. And stage one, two is absolutely brutal for the time <laughs> limit. Painstaking. Painstaking. But you will the get word. there. It's not impossible. And I'll be honest, it, there's a sense of accomplishment once you actually do it. Oh, yeah. We, it, and thankfully, the music on the stage is pretty good as well. <laughs> It is. It took us quite a while. And not only that, I mean, you found out you had to sort of change your tactic of how you were doing the mission to be able to get it done. What my brain tells me would be the fastest route from just like muscle memory from playing other games in this wasn't the fastest route. 
But yeah, it was no. fun. I really loved the game. I've 100 percented it, and I've got it again on the Switch for Christmas, which Elite's going to give me, so I'm sure I'll play through it again. I'm certain you will, but when you're playing through it, wouldn't you love a new control to go with it? Well, it's funny you should ask that, because I have just purchased a new controller. <sighs> and if you're an Xbox awesome. fan, now is a very good time, because you've not bought one, have you? I've bought two. <laughs> Which arguably are the best controllers in the world. Lots of people will fight me for the saying that, but personally, I think they're amazing. Oh, how you can can't get it better. These are on some great deals as we run up to Cyber Monday. Good selection of controllers have dropped down to about thirty-four pound ninety-nine. When was the last time you saw any Xbox controllers at that price? I do not think I have seen an Xbox controller for thirty-four ninety-nine since the original Xbox. Exactly. And so it's an absolute fantastic deal for it, especially because you can sync it to your PC, you can sync it to anything that's got Bluetooth, basically. Your Mac. I have one synced to my iPad that I use for game streaming. I've got one that's synced to my Steam Deck for if I connect that up to the monitor and I want to play a game on that. They can be synced to a lot of different devices and they're quite versatile controllers, but they're comfortable. Yes. And again... Especially the newer the, ones with the grippiness. Yeah, yeah. And there's some pretty snazzy colours available in these, isn't there? You can get your normal white and black ones if you want them. Yeah, so I got shock blue and crimson red. And you got... I don't know. What yeah, you, pulse red. And the one I got was um, electric vault, which I'm unsure whether it's yellow or green. <laughs> I think it's green. <laughs> I think it's green. Is that because you're colored blind or? <laughs> yeah. It's a very <laughs> bright green if it is green. And I'm, I say, I think it is green. But some of them are like 35, 40 pounds. That's like 20 pounds off the normal price. And it's like a good 30, 35 pounds. What they've been selling for earlier in the year when these were so difficult to get hold of. Yes. So if you want one, grab one now, especially whilst it's on the deal. Yes, and if you did want to go up a little bit to something a bit more expensive, the Series 2 Elite Controller is also on offer for £142. So it's not as big of a discount, but it's it's a good 20 quid off still. A discount, a discount. Don't, yeah. don't knock it. <laughs> no, no, and it's, it's a great controller. It's much better than the original Elite Controllers. Now, for those that aren't on the Xbox side of the fence and think they are not the greatest controllers in the world. For you, Sony have got you covered as well. So for those monsters who want to go for a PlayStation 5 controller, uh, they have knocked down by 33% to £40. So again, it's a massive discount. Grab it whilst it's hot. <laughs> you know, yeah, again, it's another £20 off and is a yeah. little bit more expensive than we've seen some of these Xbox controllers for. But in all fairness, there is a little bit more tech crammed into the PlayStation controllers. Yes, yeah, because it's microphone, touchpad, those are the bits of Bob. So, and again, these can be linked to a whole host of devices. You can link it to your PC, obviously to your PlayStation Five, and I'm fairly certain you can connect it up to most like iPads, tablets. And if you really, if you really want to be a monster, you can even use it to play Game Pass. No, no. <laughs> Some people are just anarchists, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they are. I just want to burn the world. <laughs> but now that you've got your choice, your personal preference of fantastic next-gen controllers, you might want to play them on more than just your Xbox, your PlayStation, your PC. What about your Switch? Yeah, now... Funny enough, for the Switch, you can get a nice-looking 8-bit dough wireless USB adapter. This little adapter, uh, my one is orange. Plug it to the side of my Switch. Yeah, same as mine. It looks like a Mario block, doesn't it? It does. It looks fantastic. Yeah, plugging it into your Switch dock, it just syncs via Bluetooth to any control you have. We've made use of it quite a few times, haven't we? Oh yeah, my Switch, if it's docked, which in all fairness is a rarity, it's 
always played using my red Xbox controller, which is assigned as my Switch controller. You know, red Nintendo logo. That's how I remember it. Is that because it's such a pain to try and sync a controller to this thing? Um, yeah, I, I can never remember which combination it is you press on the Xbox to get it to sync to either Bluetooth or wireless devices. But in all fairness, I just keep it as the Switch controller the majority of the time. Now, this doesn't just work on your Switch, does it? No, so if you've got a device that isn't really got decent Bluetooth or Bluetooth in it at all, like a PC or a single board computer, you can actually whack this into it and sync your controller across to it that way as well. So it acts a little bit like a Bluetooth dongle, but specifically for a controller. And again, you can link up your Xbox or your PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 controller to it. I think for me, the one thing that I've, I'm the most impressed about is just the look of it because it has such a <laughs> such a copyright infringing design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm not going to complain. I like it, and I think it suits being plugged into my Switch. Our next choice for our peripheral would be for those that love to play Xbox game streaming on the go, the 8-bit. SN30 Pro for Xbox Cloud Gaming. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful, that name. I'll give it that. It is. Um, I'm also a bit on the fence of if I like the controller or not. It's a bit of an odd-looking controller, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, so it looks like a Super Nintendo controller that's got an extra set of bumper buttons and a pair of analog sticks attached to it. Plus, a nice big Xbox logo <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> I don't know. Looking at it, I just feel like someone's just gone. Let's try and figure out how to get a PlayStation controller connect like with an Xbox symbol. Let's short down the PlayStation controller, put an Xbox button, and there you go. Yes, that is the unforgivable thing. The analog yes. sticks are symmetrical, like a PlayStation controller. Right. How I this became an it. official product, I will never know. <laughs> no, um, it looks good for a compact controller and you get a little clip that attaches to it so you can dock your phone in on the top as well. That's one thing I haven't got. I've never sort of got a controller with a mount for my phone to play cloud stream with it go. Yeah. I do quite keep thinking, oh, maybe I should do, but then I don't end up getting one. Yeah, you can actually pick up just the mounts that clip onto a standard Xbox One or Series controller and they're relatively inexpensive, like five, six quid. But if this is something that you want to just chuck in your bag for a little bit of gaming on your commute or on your dinner break at work or you're visiting family or friends, it's it's a good option. And the controller is Bluetooth, so it will connect to other devices. You can, can again, connect it to your PC. Oddly enough, I think this can connect to your Switch as well. Oh, really? But not your Xbox, even though it is an official <laughs> Xbox product. Maybe. Microsoft had the thing about that. Look, okay, you can get to, to most of the things, just not your Xbox, because we're not allowing that monstrosity. Well, there. the reason for it is because it's so small, it's got a Bluetooth chip in it, but it hasn't got the proprietary wireless connection that Xbox controllers use to connect to the console. I guess the way to keep it nice and cheap. Yeah, and the product is roughly about £35 for the, anyone interested. Oh, and just really quick, we forgot to say how much the previous 8-bit Doe device was, the wireless oh. receiver, the 15 quid, give or take a pound. That's cheap, especially if you're thinking about getting a Pro Controller. Pro Controller could say about 30 quid, maybe a bit more. So, Oh, much more, nice. like 60 quid, the Switch Pro okay. Controllers. But if you've already got an Xbox or a PlayStation controller, yeah, exactly. That's because that's what I was doing. It took me a while, and I was really trying to look at getting a controller. And it was you who said about getting one of these adapters. Yeah. Now the last one, we're going a little bit old school for this. A little bit old school. So retro bits have a whole host of Sega Mega Drive or Genesis controllers and Sega Saturn controllers that are available in both a USB fitting for your PC and modern devices or the original console connections. I can see you picking up some of these, seeing as though they are see-through. I can see me picking up the blue one, because I've already ordered it, so I can play <laughs> two-player on my Sega Mega Drive Mini. Oh, does it work with... Nice. Yes. Well, I hope so. <laughs> it worked on the original Mega Drive Mini. I'm sure it'll work on the Mega Drive Mini too. 
And I think what's most impressive is actually... I know I'm jumping ahead a bit, but the price of this as well, I'm really surprised of how cheap they are. Yeah, but you've not got rumble or six axis control, wireless, anything like that. So the prices, as you say, are really good. So the Mega Drive and the Genesis one starts from £12, and these are all six button versions of the controllers. And also you have the Sega Saturn controllers, which start at £10. So... Again, a nice inexpensive way to pick up a controller if you need it for two player. I may actually buy one of the Saturn controllers, but for the actual Saturn, not the USB version, just as a a backup. It can be the controller that I use, so I'm not putting even more wear on my 25 year old Saturn controllers that I've currently got. All right, so I'm guessing you'll go for red since you've ordered the blue one already. For uh, the Mega Drive? I think they only do red in the Sega Mega Drive controller. I'd probably go for just the standard black, or if they do it, one of the cool ones where it's like a transparent color and all the buttons, different colors. Yes. Just because that used to be my controller back in the day. I actually went to a, an import shop and actually bought that controller before I had a Saturn because it looked cool. There's something about a transparent well, anything transparent, just seeing all the board and all the different bits inside it. Just Yeah, why it's don't awesome. modern systems do that? I think they, what there is an Xbox controller you can get that is like... Yeah, I've got one where it fades from like white to transparent, but there's not very yes. many transparent. Um, I think the 20th anniversary Xbox controller actually was like a black transparent plastic. Yes. But yeah, come on, bring Atomic Purple back. That's what we're really asking for, isn't it? They use what orange. Just release a nice orange, you done. Oh yeah, not transparent orange. I want orange orange. <laughs> That's what I mean, just orange. Well, before we go on to our hardware section, should we ask for our listeners' help in growing this podcast over the next year? Yes. And you can do this by just leaving us a review on your favorite podcast app. It'll only take you two minutes and cost you nothing. Alternatively, if you're able to, you can join our Patreon for as little as one pound per month. Now, that could be also one euro or your one peso, one dollar, and you'll receive ad free versions of the podcast and you'll even get a shout out on our next episode. Yeah, well, anything's welcome, especially if it's one Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If they're worth anything nowadays. Oh, definitely would be worth uh, enough to keep us going for a long time. Right. Let's get on to the big ticket items, shall we? Yes. Hardware time. This is the one what I've been looking forward to because I who doesn't like a n- nice new bit of hardware for uh, for Christmas. Now, as I have said a lot, I reckon 2023 is going to be the year of the handheld. So what better way than start off with a small compact handheld that you can take anywhere running Android 11 with the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus? So with this, I'm actually quite impressed. It will actually run GameCube games. Yeah, it'll it'll run up to the Wii. I think it'll even run some like PS2 games. It runs a lot. Play them in the run, on the run, on the move. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to say, what have you done to be on the run? I don't know. Anything could have happened. You could be lugging it and be like, oh, I need something to play. This is actually a pretty nice console. So one thing I quite like about this is that the six to eight hour battery life it has, which is pretty decent. I think that is standard for a lot of handheld consoles nowadays. Well, it depends on the console. My Steam Deck yeah. we can only dream to get six to eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> really? Unless it's in standby. I guess the type of games it's playing, maybe. See, the thing I really like about this, apart from the fact it is quite a compact unit, it's a little bit smaller than Switch Lite, but the colours. Yeah, I've just read through the colours. Um, yeah. So Atomic Purple, color- baby. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, so I'm, I'm going through these colours already and so I've got you know I've got retro white with red buttons and you put in brackets a la OG Game Boy well yeah it's it's that kind of like reddish pink buttons yeah. that the original Game Boy had so it's a very 
DMG01 sort of style Game Boy color scheme, which again looks nice. Yeah, it would. Uh, it got black. I mean, no. It's, it's black. black. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've got. <laughs> there's not much more to say um, Indigo which again you've put in brackets a la Gamecube <laughs> you don't have to read out every note I put it was just to give you an indication of what colour it was no but the next one's my yes. favourite one <laughs> the next one <laughs> the next one you put orange I've just read it a la <laughs> I got to, I need to get a straight face now <clears throat> you put orange a la best colour ever <laughs> nope ever Ever. <laughs> so I just I started reading through and was like, uh, 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 I was like, flip sake, orange. <laughs> Next, we have two different versions of 16 bit, which are Super Nintendo inspired ones. One's the US version with the lilac buttons, and one is the not version, which has colored buttons <laughs> that we got in the UK, Europe, and Japan. Okay. Next is purple. <laughs> Atomic purple, I mean. Atomic purple, and then the other one's clear blue. <laughs> Just, you know, yeah. atomic purple! And, uh, like, kind of see-through blue, I guess. I quite like how they've gone for a lot of inspired colours here. They've not just oh, done absolutely. generic colours. There's a lot of inspired ones from original sort of different consoles. So it gives a nice feel to it. And also you can grab the one that really catches you, you know, i.e. for you, yes. to be orange. Because, you know, you're boring. For me, I'll one, go for the retro white with red buttons. Actually, in all fairness, if I did get one, it'd be tied between two colours. Either orange or atomic purple. Or atomic purple yeah. <laughs> one nice thing, though, is they actually sell the shells separately. So if you do purchase one and you think, ah, I don't want this colour, you can actually purchase the shell that you do want and add it on. Oh, so you could actually just buy the second shell and then you're done. Yeah, yeah. And... Another thing they do, so this is the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, which yeah. obviously implies there's a Retroid Pocket 3, which there is, and it's got a slower CPU and it's got less RAM. However, they will sell for about $85 a board that lets you upgrade that system to the 3 Plus. Oh, sweet. So it saves you having to purchase a whole new system. Apparently, it's not for the faint of heart, though. It's a pain to take apart. Yeah, but Just it's an option. It. It's an option for some people rather than shell out for the whole unit. However, one hundred forty nine dollars. This this seems pretty good, especially compared to some of the other systems we've seen recently, like the Logitech G Cloud. Oh no, definitely. Um, with this though, I, unfortunately, I don't know too much about it. How would you come by getting the games onto it? Sorry, by dubious means. <laughs> okay. Um, no, it it comes with the. Play Store built in. So if it's on the Play Store, okay. you can just download it. Yep. When you set it up, though, it will ask you, do you want to emulate any systems? And these are the systems we can emulate. Do you oh, want okay. us to pre-install the emulator for you? And then it's up to you to get your, your own ROMs. Fair enough. But like you said, for $149 plus shipping, actually, that's not quite a nice console, especially because it is built to use for the Play Store and able to emulate the game as well. So you've got a big selection bit addable to add to it. Yeah, and because it's running Android, you can use it to play Xbox Game Pass streaming. You can use, well, I was going to say Stadia, but <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> They're long gone. <laughs> but you can use it for Steam Link. You can use it for other streaming services as well. So you're not just stuck with your old retro games. No, so I think this is actually quite a nice little addition to a bias guide and definitely definitely one you should be looking out for if someone wants a nice little retro handheld console yes this is what logitech should have made with the g cloud yes. to be honest not not the nice looking system but very expensive system that they did come out with talk about expensive systems the next one is expensive but it's definitely worth the money the valve steam deck which you are more than accustomed to now Yes, I love my Steam Deck. Although, at the moment, I have got Windows on it, and it definitely runs a lot better with SteamOS. So you're going to switch back? Yes, I will, once you give me that pen drive back that I asked you to bring back in today. 
Oh yeah, I forgot. I'll bring it on Monday. Sorry. <laughs> Starting at three hundred and forty nine pounds for the sixty four gig Steam Deck. I think this is fantastic value for money. It's quite a capable gaming PC in your hand that lasts for about two, three hours on battery. <laughs> Thankfully, you can get a dock for it, so it's not just a handheld. Um, but I think what I'm most impressed about is the fact that the delivery estimates between one to two weeks now rather than months. <laughs> yeah, months. What? I think my first one was nearly a year it took to get to me. After no, was it between now and the time? Oh, yeah, that's what it stated on that third-party website at one point. Yeah, it's a very capable machine, and at the low resolution that the screen is, it's 1280 by 800 a little bit more than 720p. I feel like I get a Xbox Series S sort of experience from it. So I, f- I do feel like I'm getting a somewhat next-gen experience. Oh, no, definitely. It, it looks it. And all the titles, like I'm a big fan of Supreme Commander, at 4K when it's docked up to me monitor, yeah, plays plays brilliantly. Not an issue. Well, you played Subcom through it um, not long ago, and you said it played fantastic. Yeah, yeah, played. Not an issue, not an issue. And we had, what, maybe two, three thousand units all blowing yes. each other to kingdom come? Yeah, exactly. So it, it handles very well from the looks and sounds of it because i've seen you playing it and i've had a go as well and it is comfy i think it's a great little system well little isn't the word i choose to describe it it's a great handheld system yeah yeah. (laughs) that's its main downside its size is it is quite a bulky system but as you said and you hit the nail on the head it's comfortable to hold it feels a lot smaller and lighter than it actually is yes um like I alluded to earlier, you can get a dock um, alongside with it, which is £79. It has got a dual video output, so you can have two monitors by all means, and it comes with an Ethernet a port and three USB 3.1 ports. As it comes out the box, you can even use it like a normal desktop. You do get a Linux environment. You can jump into, you've got a web browser, an app store, you can do a bit of word processing with an external keyboard and mouse. So it is usable. Um, I can plug mine up now and use it as a Windows 11 machine without any issues. And I would say, if anyone's interested, have a look at picking up the 64 gigabyte version and purchasing a NVMe SSD separately. I think I picked one up and it cost me about £35 maybe. And I upgraded mine up to 256 gig. Chuck in a 256 gig micro SD card, which are almost dirt cheap at this point. And yes. you've got half a terabyte worth of storage for a good 60 quid less than what it'd cost for the next model up. Exactly. So there's, there's plenty of different ways to adapt it to however you want it to be. If you're comfortable fitting an SSD in the Steam Deck yourself, it was. A handful of screws. It was really straightforward. Good. All right. Come on, man. You can do the next one. So for the next one, I was looking for, rather than a handheld, which we've talked about a couple of, something maybe like a mini console. And I thought, well, the obvious one is the Mega Drive Mini 2. Yes. And oh, then geez. I saw the sold out and scalpers have got them up for 250 quid plus. So I thought, I'm going to have to look for something else. Another one that came out earlier this year, which is fantastic, is the A500 Mini. Now, you've got one of these yourself, haven't you? I I certainly have, and it is amazing. I just want one of the A500 Maxis when they come out, if they come out. <laughs> Obviously, the keyboard doesn't work. It is sad. However, it does come with a USB controller and tank mouse. Who doesn't like a tank yeah. mouse? Tank mouse is amazing. <laughs> Sometimes I think, I might plug it into my computer and use it as my daily driver. <laughs> Get the uh, Logitech MX Master. Pfft, who wants that? I want a tank mouse. <laughs> who needs I don't ergonomics? Need a scroll wheel. Two buttons and I'm done. <laughs> and I, I, I don't need my wrist not to have RSI. <laughs> so with this one, it comes with 25 titles. 25 yes. titles. And a couple of fantastic ones. I mean, Worms. 
Worms, yeah, worms, worms Direct is, worms. is cut, which of the original Worms game is the definitive version of it. Just don't play with Phil because he might blame you for killing his own. <laughs> <laughs> so blow, yeah. <laughs> blow up his own. Ooh, you cheated. You blew up me super sheep. What, the one that was bouncing around your worm for about 20 seconds? Oh, not that we're, we're still bitter about him blaming us for it. But no, apparently he heard us press the button. Anyway, moving on from that. The good thing about this, though, is it does actually support adding your own titles. So how would you add them then? Without hacking the unit, add more titles onto it through the USB port. All right. So just is it just, you know, plugging a USB in and then done? Yeah. Drive, sorry. I don't know if you still need to, because they did say they were going to change it, but it does need to be the WHD load versions of them, which are special versions of Amiga games that are designed to run from a hard drive rather than floppy disks. Okay. But they did say they were actually planning on just supporting straight floppy disk images so that you can just pop games on there. Because really, what we need is we need extreme violence running on this. <laughs> that really basic game that's all you and Phil playing, but yeah. Yeah, the one where it starts and goes, good, good, Mental. get ready. Now, with this, at the minute, you can pick it up, I think, for, wasn't it, £99 on Amazon? Uh, at the 97 quid, I think Black it was. Friday. So, un- under 100 quid, which... Yes. It's not, it's not super cheap, but it's a good value. Well, yeah, so definitely when the podcast come out, if you listen to it, jump on, have a look on Cyber Monday. And after that little sidetrack, we're going to go back to the handheld, to the Evercade EXP. Yeah, so another handheld that was released this year is quite an interesting one because Evercade, for those of you that haven't somehow seen any of the systems, is a modern system, but with very retro roots. So all the games, with the exception of one bundle, comes on a physical cartridge in a case with this weird thing inside called a manual. Do you remember them? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, I do. I really do. And I miss them being in game boxes, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, we were actually only talking about this the other day. Where it was more was like, yeah. why did they even put a space for a manual in most games? No, just a space. They put the clips in there so you can feed something into it. That's so what I mean. Like, it's just a waste of plastic because they never give you a manual. No, no, they don't. And sometimes you get like leaflets about adverts and sometimes you get like, you know, DLC codes, but there's no yeah, point. Just put them loose clips. in it at that point. It's a single piece of paper half the time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I guess not everyone used to read the manuals. But Evercade are keeping the manual alive. Good. Good. I think the satisfaction of opening up and having a manual has been like, hang on, I'm stuck. How do I do something? Flick to a manual, you'd sorted. Well, some manuals would give you like a guide for the beginning of the game. But the thing yes. I always remember about a manual is when I was a kid, I'd go out, go to the shop. I'd have saved up my pocket money or as a treat. My mum or dad would have bought me a game. And I always remember sitting in the back of the car, reading every single word in the manual, hyping myself up for when we get home. And then being disappointed <laughs> when my dad just goes, oh, you just need to be nipping being cute. We'll just be like half an hour. I'm like, no, I want to go home and play my game. <laughs> I've read it from you know, cover to cover. Look, I even know what the power-ups are. <laughs> See, give me a cheat code. And in some cases, the manual was the only way you could figure out what was going on in the story of a game because it gives yes. you no context in the game. No, and the manual kind of gives you an overview or at least a brief description. Kind of like how a book yeah. gives you a... Uh, synopsis. Synopsis. Nah, I don't know. Um, yeah, it gives you the synopsis of the back of a book. The manual will sometimes do the same thing. So it sets the well, whole scene for you. Yeah, I remember playing Alex Kid on the Mass System when I got it, because it was built into the console. And then yes. one day it was like, oh, there's a manual in the box. I've never noticed this. And I read this and I read, what? I am a prince. I am trying to find my father, the king, and my brother, the other prince. I was training upon a mountain in the sacred art of Jenkin. I did not get any of this from the game. I thought I was just punching the dragon in the face and playing rock, paper, scissors. Oh, that's, all you, that's all you need to know, if I'm honest. Well, yeah, it's, it's all you need to know. But when you've read a bit of story, you're like, oh, yeah, this makes More sense. Invested. Even though it doesn't, in your mind, you're just making it up. And it, it does actually make it feel a little bit more involved. No, it definitely does. Um, So thank you, Evercade, for keeping the manual alive, at least to a certain extent. Absolutely. And 
The Evercade Versus, as I did allude to before, actually comes with 18 games built in by Capcom. And there's some yes. cracking games on here like Mega Man, Street Fighter 2, Hyper Fight, and Final Fight. We've spoken about this before, and we mentioned it before as well, but it's nice to see modern companies having an interest in retro games like this. Why not? It's, it's easy money for them, isn't it? Capcom have already made these games. Yeah, get sick of a new uh, handheld console, you're sorted. Yeah, or even better, Capcom. Make a Capcom 40th anniversary or whatever it'll need to be and include like 100 games and a really good load of bonus features. You can't let Atari beat you. You've got to make your own and it's got to be better. Yeah, give us video content, please. Now, what is really nice with this is I think it's over 30 cartridges they've got available for it so far. Yeah, they've got a massive back catalogue of cartridges. I f- think I saw it was 380 games across all the cartridges. Yeah, so I might say it back a bit, but brilliant collections that are out there. And they've chosen some fantastic games across them, which we yeah. load on the Versus. So again, it's definitely another one to be picked up. And we were just talking about the Amiga. They've also announced they'll be bringing at least a single Amiga collection to the console as well. So, so we could see some really good titles on there. Yes, a lot of collections. So for the Evercade EXP, do we have a price for it all? Yeah, you can pick this up for £129, which includes not only the 18 built-in Capcom titles we mentioned before, but you also get the IREM Arcade cartridge, which has six arcade titles, including the fantastic R-Type. A great collection, and... 129.99 for a handheld console which can have over 30 cartridges and loads and loads of games. Sorted. And what's more as well, if you're not feeling the handheld love, even though next year is definitely the year the handheld, you can yes. get the home version of the console, the Evercade Versus. If next year's going to be the year of the handheld, how many handhelds do you reckon you're going to end up with next year? What, me personally? <laughs> or just to anyone who likes handhelds and <laughs> to be honest i think most people are probably gonna well i think most people already have a switch at this point <laughs> yes. so many of them around i think it won't be too strange to see someone who has a switch and maybe if they're a bit more into gaming something like a steam deck or a neo or something similar to that sort of you know yeah. a pc in a handheld style system I don't think it'll be the year of the streaming handheld, though. I don't think that's going to be a thing for a while. No matter how much Razer and Logitech want it to be. It depends who's going into that handheld race, I guess. No, as an extra feature on a handheld, definitely, but not as the primary use of it. Fair enough. Sorry, sorry Logitech, I have nothing against you. I love you, but uh, it just seems a bit dumb. Google, you better not ever touch this. <laughs> Handheld. Yeah, go away, Google. Ever. Just don't get involved in gaming again, please. All right, come on. Finale. If you are looking for something a bit more next gen, there realistically is only one great deal going at the moment, isn't there? Oh, 100%. And um, people might think we're a bit biased, but pff, I don't care. The Xbox Series S. Yes. It's sitting there under £200. So it's currently sat at £189, which is very rare you ever see a next-gen console. Well, sorry, I've never seen a next-gen console at this price. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a new current-gen console under £200 since, like, the, the Wii. No, not for selling brand new. So it definitely is a good way to get yourself into the current gen consoles if you're looking for a way in for 189 pounds i wouldn't knock it we both have one we both absolutely love it don't see a massive difference between this and the x so it's definitely a way to step into the current gen if you're looking for a console absolutely and chucking game pass in there what is it at the moment like 11 pound per month and you've got hundreds of games ready to go straight away and you can also use Xbox Game Cloud streaming on it. So you don't even need to install a lot of these games, especially if you just want to dip in and see what they're like first. Yeah, exactly. The amount of games that 
I fancy playing on Game Pass. I'm like, oh, quick, just stream it, play for stream, give it five, ten minutes, and you know whether or not you like it. If you like it, download Absolutely. it. If not, move on. This is a fantastic offer. And bundle it with a £35 controller from what we were mentioning before. It's great for the kids, you know, two-player. Plenty of great two-player games, especially stuff like Halo Infinite. <laughs> yeah, definitely for the kids. Um, Lego games, there's some of them in Game yeah. Pass, stuff like that. So there's always something there. Our Human Fall Flat, fantastic two-player game. As we say, there's hundreds of games to choose from, not only through Xbox Game Pass, but you've got EA Access on there as well. Games with gold. Yes, yes, you do. And I think that's a nice way to end up with podcast, isn't it? So hopefully that's give you some great ideas for the gamer in your life, or maybe even for yourself, you know, put it on your wish list to Santa. If you've been a good boy or girl, you might get it. <laughs> you never know. But like I said at the start, it's something for everyone, retro and current. Have a look, pick something up if you know they want it and give a nice surprise. I'm Anthony, and this is the end of the episode. If you'd like to find out more about anything mentioned, then visit the show notes. We've been the Retro Gamer Dads, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>